So I've been wanting to make this video for quite some time now, maybe a couple of weeks because uh, look at this thing. Yeah, wow. It is a fan on the ZV-E1, but not just any fan. This is a fan by Tilta and it's extremely rugged design. It's incredible and it's only 65 US. Like what? And check this out. Watch this, watch this. Ready? Uh-huh. Push it back in. Flush against the back. How good is that? But in this video, we're not just going to be talking about the fan, the overheating test, but we're going to be talking about this cage. Look at how good this cage is. This is probably one of the best cages I've seen for any camera. Tilter are really doing incredible things like just how it fits, the versatility, and where everything is, we've got a lot to get through. So we'll talk about the cage, we'll talk about the overheating uh, fixes on this fan and uh, the settings, everything about this. So timestamps will be below, but let's get into the video. It's going on my friends, I hope you're all doing absolutely fantastic and uh, just want to say thank every one of you guys for liking my videos and subscribing. You guys mean a lot and hopefully I'm going to be bringing a whole bunch more content your way. Uh, but today, like I said, we're going to be talking about this ZV-E1 cage and the things that actually comes on here, it's so well built. And one of the things that I absolutely love right from the bat happens to be this handle. Now, I actually prefer the larger grips and the ZV-E1 has a smaller grip because it's designed to be a vlogging camera. It's meant to be very uh, small. You can pretty much put it in your pocket, put it in a very small camera bag, but it obviously has a smaller grip because of that. This cage actually gives you a larger grip to hang on to. So it feels so much better in the hand. So ergonomically, I love how this feels and it's just, it fits perfectly on my hand. And when it comes to the fit on the body itself, it hugs the body extremely close. Like if you can see these points here where it actually slides into, that is incredible. The design is really, really good. It's rugged. And the great thing about this cage here is that because it's so close, because it's so compact, it, uh, it doesn't swivel inside the cage. And that is a massive thing. If you, you know, uh, putting this on, mounting this on a gimbal, mounting this on anywhere, you don't want the cage to be, you know, nice and rugged and the camera to slide inside the cage. This one, it doesn't happen at all. Now also, this doesn't block any of the buttons whatsoever. And also, one major thing is it doesn't block the tally light on the front. So they haven't forgot about the tally light. So you can still see that you're recording uh, because the ZV-E1 does have that front tally light on the, uh, the top corner there. And then when it comes to all the other ports, it's just in front of the port. So you have full access to any of the ports if you really wanted to get into there while you're shooting. Okay, let's talk about the cage and the mounting points. Obviously, you've got mounting points on the right-hand side. They do have a little mounting point here in the bottom for a side hand strap. So if you actually have one of those side hand straps from Tilta, you can actually utilize those two mounting points. But obviously, you've got four quarter 20 mounts uh, on the side here, but also some sort of locating pins there that if you do have those quarter 20 mounts with the locating pins, that is perfect. And then we move it over to the other side and we've got three mounting points over this side and then locating pins on two of them. So that is extremely useful. But also, like I said before, this side part here is NATO size. So you can actually mount this directly onto that side and then you have a full vertical rig if you really wanted to anyway. So that is extremely, extremely handy. And Tilta also offers focusing handles or other handles that you can attach directly into here as well. And then when it comes to the top, you do obviously have three quarter 20 mounts in the top, which one of them will be for the top handle. Uh, and then you've got one here directly on the side and then just a cold shoe mount directly on the left hand side. And now when it comes to the base, you can actually get the cage by itself or you can actually get the base plate as well. So this one, is an Arca Swiss type, so it screws two screws directly into the base, and that will give you that Arca Swiss sort of sliding plate there. The great thing is, is you know how you have these little tools? This one actually still is, you can access it even if this little base plate is on. It's magnetic, sticks to the bottom, it's perfect if you actually wanna do it up or undo it as well. 
So at the base here, you can pretty much see you've got four quarter 20 mounts and one three outs and eights mount there as well. No mounts directly in the center, but it doesn't really worry me too much. I just put a base plate on there, but uh, I've been using this base plate anyway because I use Arca Swiss pretty much everything. So that one pretty much stays on the bottom there and then I can attach it to my tripod. Now, first off, when it comes to this handle, the rubber design is really, really good. It feels, ergonomically, it feels really, really good in the hand. And it is a NATO rail design. So you can pretty much mount this on the side if you really wanted to, you can mount it on the top. It just depends on obviously how you shoot. So if you do vertical content, there is that NATO rail on the side that you can put it into and that'll help you, you know, hold the camera for the vertical content. Or obviously this is designed to be on the top. So it does come with a little NATO rail point that you can attach directly to the top of the camera and then put that on here. Now, first of all, I thought, okay, well, it's actually off center. Usually handles are sort of in line with the center of the sensor, but uh, the weight where it's actually uh, mounted for is the correct sort of uh, center of gravity. So this is slightly off to the right hand side, but it is the perfect uh, point of center of gravity for this camera. Now, one thing I haven't seen before and is really welcomed is on this cold shoe at the top here, you do have a quarter 20 mount, which you can actually screw a cold shoe mount directly into there. I haven't actually had a cold shoe monitor mount that has a screw that screws into there, but that is an option anyway. But you do have a 3 8 mount on the front with locating pins, which is uh, really good, obviously, for monitor mounts on the front. And then you have a whole bunch of options at the top with a couple of quarter 20s and then a couple of 3 8 mounts as well. And then you've got one on the back. And it just gives you so many mounting points considering how small this thing actually is. Okay, now let's talk about this fan and how it mounts. Now you do have these two little screws at the bottom that mounts directly into this little sliding plate, which is really interesting because that allows you to close your screen as well as when you open it, it puts it back, you know, directly flush against the back of the camera, which is what you actually need. So you need to cool down the back of the camera and that's going to help cool the internals or at least, you know, release some of the heat, which is really good. And if you don't slide it out, you can see it won't fully close. So you pull it out and then put it back. So it actually still is quite thin even if you did want to be able to, you know, put it directly into your backpack. Now this one has two different modes. It's pretty much got mode one and mode two, which are obviously just speeds. And this is powered through USB-C, which is a five volt, but you can't plug this directly into the camera because the output of the camera isn't strong enough to power these. So you do need to have an external battery, or if you're going to be using this, it's probably most likely like a V-mount battery system, like a full cage cinema rig sort of thing. Uh, but there are obviously small uh, external batteries that you can actually use and hook this directly into it. And I think one of the best things that I love about the design of this, it's just really rugged. It is a nice sort of magnesium alloy design and uh, the fan is actually quite large and it fits perfectly onto the back of this camera. Now it also does fit perfectly on the back of the Alpha 7 IV as well, but it does seem like most newer Sony cameras have a very similar screen size. So I'm pretty sure you could probably utilize it with most Sony cameras. Okay, let's go into this overheating test and see what kind of scores we got. Now, I was really happy with 4K60 or 4K50 because I'm in PAL. Now, I don't usually test 4K50 because I don't understand why someone would need to hit record and put it on a tripod and have it in 4K50. I can understand those use cases in say a wedding or something. If you're putting it on a tripod and you want a wide shot and you want to put it in slow motion and capture a wider slow motion shot, there is that option there. But in all my videos, like I said, the ZV-E1 wasn't designed for long record times. People are trying to use this camera to what it's not really designed for, but this fan does allow for that because in 4K50, interior, no air moving, uh, it got well over an hour and 20 minutes until my card filled up and uh, yeah, I didn't realize that, but <laughs> um, I'm very happy with those results. But when it came to direct sunlight as well, it certainly does help with that record time. And uh, 4K25, you pretty much have no worries. The one thing is, is that the fan isn't like crazy loud, 
but you can hear it if you do have a shotgun microphone. So this is the fan on level one in my normal location, pretty much uh, just over an arm's length away from the camera. And then you're going to be able to hear it directly through my shotgun microphone that I'm using on top, which is the ECMB10. Okay, now I'll put it on to level two. Now we just. So you're hearing this through the ECMB10 on top of my Sony ZV-E1. And now will you actually hear it directly through this microphone? And even if you are in an interview situation, I can guarantee you won't hear it because it is just way too far away uh, in an interview situation. So my thoughts overall, this is incredible, especially for the price, 65 for the fan. I think it's about 75 for the cage, but if you do want the base plate and stuff, uh, it's like maybe 99 US. So overall, the, the quality that you get for the price, it's just unmatched. It's incredible. And I love that uh, third-party companies like Tilter are bringing out uh, things that are gonna help us creators, creating whatever we want and use these cameras to pretty much how they're not supposed to be used. But I love this thing, uh, can't recommend it enough. Like this thing, it's from my opinion, it's pretty much flawless. Like I do wish there was a mounting point in the middle, but that doesn't really worry me too much because I understand that there is that sliding point for the fan um, and I utilize their base plate anyway. So that suits me perfectly. But for what I do, this thing is still incredible. And the ZV-E1 is just one of those cameras that I take absolutely everywhere because man, Full frame, 4K, 100 frames per second, uh, fast rolling shutter, incredible image quality. I mean, it's just one of those cameras that it'll just be around forever. I love this thing. But anyway, my friends, the link will be in the description below if you do want to check this fan or the tilter cage as well. And uh, yeah, obviously jump onto my Instagram because I do tend to leak a lot of these on my Instagram first and then make a full YouTube video about it because it does take a lot longer to make these videos. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Let's get it.